This February was quite a mild month, but we managed to save £200 on our energy bills when we compare it to February 2023. I want to talk you through a few of the factors and the reasons behind that, but mostly it comes down to our heat pump and being on the right tariff. Let me just jump into my data. As always, I want to be completely transparent and show you exactly how this is all calculated. This is a little bit of an update on the spreadsheet with some help of one of my uh, great viewers, Adam. So big shout out. Thank you for organizing this and making it a little bit more presentable. If you want to jump into this and analyze it yourself, pause the screen and you can uh, get the exact breakdown. I'm just going to draw out a couple of highlights. Um, I'm going to move on to the presentation tab here. This shows the correlation between the outside temperature and the coefficient of performance. And it, you can see that on average, it was quite a warm month. The month of February 2024, we averaged just below eight degrees here in the, on the south coast, whereas 2023, we averaged just below six degrees. So we're almost two degrees warmer and more mild. You can tell straight away that it was a good month. You can see that for the heating side of things, our cops were up in the fives for quite a few times. And even once we combine that with a domestic hot water, we're still not bringing the cops down that low. And we almost broke the cop of five for the day of 14th of February, but not quite there. As a reminder, my heat pump system is a budget British gas installation, um, nothing fancy. It's a seven kilowatt uh, Valent Aratherm Plus. We've got a buffer tank. We've got microbore pipe work. It's retrofitted, no underfloor heating. So, you know, we're fighting against a lot of the typical uh, stereotypes that get thrown at heat pumps and still seeming to save ourselves a lot of money and staying very warm and being very efficient. So this is um, some of the cost savings versus a gas boiler. And this is going on the basis that gas boilers actually run at 80% efficiency, despite what some people will try and claim. Anyway, step down off the high horse. This table is for you to examine maybe drop something in the comments if there's anything that jumps out to you you can see that these prices are both based on the price cap rate and so you can see our saving there our overall saving if we were on the price cap for gas and electricity for our heating and hot water we would have saved 37 pounds 62 in the month of february um we're not though and because we are on the octopus tracker tariff this is what i haven't put in here so although we saved 37 pounds 62 if we were comparing the price cap against each other because we're actually on octopus tracker i've put down here the rate that we paid per day so this is 18.31 pence uh, down to 17.58 and you can see that the average rate for the month was 17.64 65 if you round up pence per unit and that compares favorably compared to the 28.75 i think it is for the price cap and so you can see that if we were on the price cap it would have cost us 92 pounds to run the heat pump but on octopus tracker it cost us 46 pounds and that saved us 46 pounds so i'm a link as always octopus tracker i think it's a great product because it follows the wholesale rate it so much lower than the price cap and it and it's a completely even rate throughout the whole day so it works really well for heat pumps you don't have to worry about your heat pump ramping right up and killing efficiency or turning it off at peak times or anything like that you can just run it 24 hours a day at a nice low rate compared to the um to the price cap the other thing i won't go into in this uh, video i'll do a separate video about that is you viewers regular viewers will know we've got solar panels on the roof now we used 132 kilowatt hours of solar energy for our heat pump in february which would be 37 pounds of energy at the price cap rate or 22 pounds at the tracker rate so we could deduct that off of our costs as well if we're uh, actually looking at the octopus tracker cost of running the heat pump at 46 pounds if we deduct the 22 pounds that we've got from solar then actually we are kind of just paying 24 pounds for the month of february for heating and hot water 
Okay, uh, let's move on. Um, this is the relevant information on the CO2 saving, which is actually just overwhelming how big the CO2 savings are. I hadn't anticipated that at all. Did I uh, give you the full scroll? There you go. Take a screenshot if you wanted to see the degree days versus the cost and the saving between gas and electricity. And this one, the same for the CO2 savings. These are kilograms of CO2 per day. So you can see on some of the worst days, some of the coldest days, um, the CO2, we would have been 30 kilograms of CO2 per day for the gas boiler. And with the grid as it was in February, cleaner than January, by the way, um, we only emitted on the worst day 4.73 kilograms of CO2. So once again, freeze it if you want. Drop something in the comments if you notice something in particular. Um, blue line degree days. Obviously, the the nice tall bars there are how much CO2 we would have emitted on a heat pump. And overall, the uh, total for gas is 371 or three round it up to 372 kilograms and if we round up the heat pump it's 43 kilograms of co2 so over the one month alone that's 329 kilograms of co2 saved not as much as in january but we didn't heat half as much as january so even though the grid is cleaner we didn't use as much energy so the saving of co2 isn't quite as much and um, let's have a quick look at our scatter graph how's that doing um i haven't got it all in frame rubbish okay so this i'll do better next month this line here is for zero degrees this is two degrees four degrees six degrees eight degrees ten degrees here and you can see 10 degrees our coefficient of performance is about 4.75 there or thereabouts a, li a little bit under but um that's a good approximation and you can see if we want a copper four then we're looking at five degrees and five degrees or above we expect to get a cop of four which is interesting and it's much better than my expectations so what am i missing in this video well um like i said uh february is our best cop so far so what this isn't showing, this isn't showing the monthly total. So our monthly total for heating was 4.47 coefficient of performance. For domestic hot water is 3.64. And our overall COP for the month is 4.31, which is our best month. Uh, previously in January, it was 3.71. In uh, December, it was 4.1. And in November, it was 4.06. So we're very pleased with that. We're very happy with it. Um, I didn't mention it on the out outset. We're a detached four-bed house. We're a family of five. We heat the whole house uh, all day long. And in fact, February, we were heating the house more than we were back in January because we were trying to utilize the solar. So I basically took away the daytime setback completely. So the heat pump runs consistently from 6 in the morning until 8.30 p.m. And then it has a setback overnight to try and drop the temperature so that it's more comfortable to sleep in because it's just been way too warm. That's one of the things we've been trying to get right. We're, we want good efficiency, but we want the house to be comfortable. And the, the biggest downside for me has been it's been too warm at night all throughout the day that slow and steady heating it builds up so much thermal mass that everything like our chairs and our beds and everything else isn't cool and it takes a long time for the house to then cool down throughout the night and um, i've been monitoring some of that data maybe that's a completely separate video as i've already said coming up in my next video i'll put together an, an, an analysis on my solar panel system how that's doing for us um, if it's meeting our expectations how it's working in conjunction with the heat pump I mean I've just touched on a couple of items there there is no uh, data connection there's no bus link between our solar panel inverter and our uh, and our heat pump sadly i think that's something that we will see in the future so it doesn't automatically utilize the energy and prevent export etc so i've been manually tweaking our temperature throughout the day 
to try and get the right balance but of course our solar generation uh, fluctuates from day to day i hope this is a helpful little overview to you i think on the venn diagram of um uh, people who are moving into renewable technologies there seems to be roughly three major camps you can be someone who is really interested in the technology side of it and you're a super nerd and that's great you can be someone who's really interested in cutting carbon emissions and looking at the just the environmental aspects and that's brilliant and there's some people who are just motivated by the finances and the potential savings that can come from re renewable technology i like to think i fit somewhere in the middle of that triangle or in the circle of those overlapping uh, areas some comments in the past have mentioned that i just focus on the finances well i do that for a few reasons it's the only thing that seems to hit a target on YouTube. Now, I don't know what that says about you as the audience more than it does about me. Um, when I talk about the uh, carbon emissions and the savings around that, people seem to switch off. You can actually see the analytics in the videos where I talk about both things. And you can also see that the videos that have just been targeted at carbon savings, people are completely... Uh, switched off on it then again on the technology side of it and technical aspects people do seem to be quite engaged so it seems to be a strong audience and people seem to have a, a much keener interest in the financial savings and the technology side and unfortunately the environmental side seems to be playing well not even second fiddle it's uh it's the uh ugly stepchild that no one wants to talk about unfortunately and it is an important part to me so I wanted to make that clear in this video if I haven't made that clear in the past. It would be really helpful for me if my loyal viewers that watch these um, put something in the comments to give me some guidance on what they like and what they don't like. I'm probably not going to keep doing the heat pump month by month through the summer months. I'll probably start moving it into a quarterly basis. But I want to make sure that the videos are concise and packed with the information that you really want to see from my real world data. Um, also, the things that you don't like, just let me know. Uh, on some of my previous videos, I've had some uh, good constructive feedback I won't take it as harsh criticism you've probably seen from the comment section that I've got quite tough skin so just let me know the things that aren't quite working for you and especially if there's some general consensus I'd l my intention here is to make some real world data available to people in an easily digestible way there's plenty of people out there that love heat pump monitor the website and that's brilliant and they can dig into the technical aspects but um, I want this to be a positive outlet of how good heat pumps are to live with and so far our experience is brilliant so um, I've been waffling on far too long I'm gonna have to trim loads out of this in the edit phase if this video has had value to you then do the YouTube things like and subscribe and all that stuff and I'll have another video coming shortly so thanks for watching bye